If you guys have been following what is going on with Russia and Ukraine for the last one and a half years, then I'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of these Russian street interviews. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that after seeing these interviews, a lot of people actually decided that it just seems like in Russia, maybe one or two people out of ten are actually decent people, and the rest are just completely insane warmongers who just want to destroy the entire world or whatever. And we'll have these polls coming out from the Russian government, essentially saying that 80% of the Russian population is actually in support of this special military operation. A lot of people essentially come to the conclusion that most of Russian people are complete zombies that have no empathy or humanity whatsoever. Now, I personally do not believe that to be entirely true. I've already talked on this channel about polls in Russia and how polls in an authoritarian country where you're not allowed to express your opinion or else you'll go to jail for 7 to 15 years. I think these polls are not exactly representative of what the people actually think. And I'm pretty sure, by the way, guys, that if we agree to not believe the Russian election stats that are coming out from the Russian government, why does everybody in the West suddenly believe the polls coming from the Russian government that are basically saying that 99.9% .9 of the people are all in support of Putin and uh, Z? That's just a little bit curious to me. Well, in today's video, I, Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, I'm going to try to make you look at these Russian street interviews from a bit of a different point of view, because the truth is that these street interviews in Russia are actually very, very dangerous, and given the wrong opinion in one of these interviews on the streets, could possibly give you a very, very lengthy sentence in the gulag. And to start off this video, I would like you guys to just watch one clip. Но наше правительство развязало вот Путин, его гоп-компания, Россия сама себе создала вот эти все проблемы. So yeah, this is just a clip from one of these three. Be yeah, yeah, reiškia ne tik apie vienas, kad tu 20 kalbą, čia apie daugiau kalbų, nes jau visokių daugiau yra. Ir aš vienas žiūrėjau, kur tikrai pasijautė, kad labai šališkas buvo, nu, bandę pateikti. 1,40 bandę pateikti tam tikrą požiūrį. 1,40 man nesijaučia, kad taip tragiškai bando pateikti. Man atrodo, jie biškai labiau subalansuotai bando pateikti. Dabar problema yra, aišku, sample, nu, sample bias. Ten nuvaro, žinai, į kokį miestą, bet jie nuvaro, žiūrėk, nu, žinai, nuvaro į kaimelį, bet rečiau, dažniausiai arba Sankt Peterburgas arba Maskva, kur labiau kitokia biškai publika. Nu, bet jie biškai paivairina žmonės. Bet va dabar tas atsikas raišiau mes nežinosim. Nes va tie daro video specialiai, I guess, kad paivairinti, kad įvairių pusį parodyti, bet kiek jie iškarpa, neaišku, ar iškarpa, neaišku. Ir ar tam, kad parodytų visokių pusių, Tu nepadarai, kad viena pusė yra daug mažiau reprezentuojama. Neaišku. Nes, pavyzdžiui, jeigu tu darėsi video e, plokščia žemė prieš apvalią žemę ir padarysi du plokščia žemė ir trys mokslininkai, gali atrodyti, kad nu, mokslininkų ir plokščia žemė yra daug garčiau, bet tu tiesiog stengiasi parodyti biškai nu, abi pozicijas. O realiai yra du plokščia žemė ir 25 tūkstančiai mokslininkų, nu, prie kiekvieną dviejų plokščią žemę, ten tarkim. Tai, vat, iš tos pusės tie video, nu, aišku, neįmanoma bus nuspręst, bet aš, nežinau, mes apie tą esam kalbėję, nemanau, kad kažkurie iš mūsų pasigautų ar susidarytų vaizdą ir galvotų, kad, ai, čia atspindi realybę, nu, nes tai nėra neįtyrimus niekas, tai tiesiog apklausa tam tikrų žmonių, ką jie pasisakys. Ir labiau mes klausom, kad iškiris kokius jie argumentus, sako vienu ar kitoj pusėj, o ne kad įgaut žinių, kiek procentaliai rusų yra prieš kažką, rūš kažką. Bet gali žinom toliau. Interviews done in Russia, and the question being asked here is basically, does Russia need to seek a normalization of their relationship with NATO? And this man right here is one of the only people in this entire street interview who essentially was brave enough to actually rival the Russian propaganda's narrative. And, uh, and here, guys, is where I deliver the punchline. Essentially what's happening right now is that this man is currently under custody and oh, is shit. being trialed for spreading fake news and misinformation about oh. Russia's military actions in Ukraine. And this man was at first facing five years in prison and is currently being faced with 10 years in prison. Whoa. Interview. Essentially, this interview right here was filmed in July of 2022, and in March of 2023, a criminal case was started against Yuri Kahavets, which is the man in the video, who once again spread the fake news about Russian military. That is actually... <laughs> one of the new laws Russia passed quickly after starting the uh, 
special military operation in itself essentially to crack down on free speech and criticism of the uh <laughs> special military operation i have to say this once again and if you guys this question is what is exactly spreading fake news about the russian military it could mean a very broad amount of things you know first of all from saying the three letter word that starts with a letter w if you say that word instead of saying the word special military operation there's already many cases like this in russia for example a uh local moscow politician alexei gorinov was actually sent to prison for seven years for saying that exact word not that long ago so uh this is happening and essentially guys uh what this guy yuri kahavets is being trialed for is spreading misinformation and fake news about uh, uh -oh. well how do i say this guys uh it's really difficult to film these videos to be quite frank because uh i prefer really not to not to speak yeah. if i speak i am in in big trouble in big trouble and i don't want to be in big trouble i mean yeah exactly and uh it's hard for me to even describe what he's being trialed for but essentially yuri here in his interview actually said a bunch of things about the events that transpired in bucha and essentially in russia right now if you claim that any actions of the russian military could classify as you're essentially committing this exact crime of uh, spreading fake information about the military and so currently here yuri is actually being accused of not only just spreading misinformation about the russian army but actually spreading it with the intent of spreading hate and animosity so essentially they're classifying this interview he's given as a sort of a hate crime, hate crime so what do i have to say about this yeah, this is absolutely just must... breaks my heart to be man taip patinka žinai kai kaip ten tie kurie bando ištrinti tiena square tą tipo istoriją arba dabar bučias istoriją Reiškia tikrai, blėt, ten jau, nu, įrodymas yra. Jeigu tu taip mėgini ištrinti tą e, įvykį, kad net žmonėm neleidi kalbėti apie tą įvykį. Jesus. Gal, nu, gerai, neįrodymas teniškai, bet speaks volumes, gerai, taip išreikšia. Quite honest, and this man right here, in my opinion, Yuri, needs to be remembered, because I believe stories like these are actually very important. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because it seems to me that in the West, people don't really know about this, they don't really care, to be quite honest. True. And in my opinion, a lot of the times, these street interviews give a sort of a skewed perception of what the Russian actual public opinion is like. And here's the thing, I actually do believe that Russian street interviews could be a great type of content, for example, the channel 1420 on YouTube, oh. which I'm sure you've seen probably if you watch me as well. They do all sorts of street interviews in Russia and they discuss different topics and a lot of the content they make in my opinion is actually very unique and it's something that not a lot of people are even able to make and I think they're actually a very brave group of people for still staying in Russia and doing what they do, asking the questions that they ask, right? However, here's the thing, I don't think that there's inherently anything wrong with the people doing street interviews per se, but the concept of doing street interviews in an authoritarian country that could actually jail you for 10 10 years for saying the wrong opinion on camera the genre itself is kind of dead or at least you cannot get an actual representative image of the society from these interviews the thing is the way i see it is that these three interviews kind of just uh, confirm people's biases that already exist true so essentially if you're sort of a you know this kind of a westerner who basically says that all russians are slaves you know and uh, they have an inherent gene of slavery in their blood or whatever and they're actually you know not a civil society that shouldn't exist in a civil war Apie tą, kur sako, kur, nu, tie video patvirtina tą, kad tu jau žinai. Um, yra vienas fenomenas, aš nežinau, ar jis yra dokumentuotas, greičiausiai. Greičiausiai visi blėt fenomenai yra dokumentuoti, apie ką aš tik esu pagalvoja savę, nes po metus aš žinau, kad o, yra terminas. Um, pavyzdžiui, dabar kaip reikia algoritmai, ne? Uh, kai tu žiūri video, nu, pavyzdžiui, Mes, pažiūrėjom, va, žiūrim įvairias nuomonės, ne? Ten žiūrim lėkstutę ar kažką. Bet, pažiūrėjom, nu, ir mes galim sudaryti tokį įvaizdį, kad, nu, va, aš nesu echo chamberį jokiam, nu, ir aš nesu episteminė burblė, nes kai manęs daina kitą informaciją. Bet, man atrodo, 9-5 procentų žmonių, iki kurių daina ta kita informacija, kurie bent jau jaučiasi, kad iki jų daina kita informacija, nes jie, pavyzdžiui, YouTube'ai, pamatė kažkokį video, kur buvo, nu, va ta, beit, nu, ta nesutinkantį nuomonę gal su jų, arba ten tik tokia šiortuose. Ir aš tą pastebiu, pavyzdžiui, pamatau, kur, nu, aš tiesiog nesutinku. Bet realiai, tie klipai yra labai specifiki. Jie, jie tarsi nėra iš tos opozicinės pusės. Jie tarsi yra... Taip kaip jie skamba, taip kaip jie sudėlioti, taip kaip jie tokius, kokius argumentus vartoja. Tai tarsi yra, pavyzdžiui, uh, jie yra tokie blogi argumentai, pavyzdžiui, 
kad tu tiesiog patvirtini savo, kad tie žmonės yra psichopatai. You know what I mean? Tu techniškai negauni jų pozicijos, bet tu gauni tokią, vos ne, karikatūrą tos pozicijos, kur tu pamatai, tu nesutinks tą poziciją, bet tai yra toks absurdas, kad atrodytų, kad tavo pusė esanti žmonės padarė, tą pasakė, kad iliustruotų tą poziciją, tarkim. Nežinau, labai taip keistaip būtent yra, kad, kad gerai tu pamatėjai video, su kurio tu nepritari, Bet ką iš tikrųjų tas video padarė? Ar tu sužinoji argumentą, kurį tie žmonės naudoja? Realiai ne. Nes ten būna... Nu, arba tu sužinoji pati labiausiai ekstremalų argumentą, kurie vartoja. Bet ką realiai padarė tas video? Tavo galvoj patvirtino tą, kad tu jau žinoji, kad jie naudoja blogą argumentą ir kad jie yra visiškai išprotėję debilai. Kas man atrodo yra specifinio to... Tai yra burbulo dalis, nes algoritmas bando tau duoti video, kad tau sukeltų emociją, tu paspausim ir komentarą parašytum ir toliau, bet jis nėra suinteresuotas tau duoti geriausią argumentą. Dabar kai eini ir žiūri, vat, ką mes darom dviejų valandų video, pavyzdžiui, kur ten, tu ten jau išgirsti įvairiom temom, arba mes tris valandos kalbam, įvairiom temom gan giliai tipo argumentus, bet jų... Ir šortų nedarys tų argumentų, darys tos kritinius, tos wild pasakymus, ką ir aš padariau. Įdėjau šortų su vat, e, Saulium, tokius nu, labiausiai beitinančius, užkabinančius, nu, ten tuos, kur atrinkau random, nes aš nenoriau trijų valandų iš naujas klausyti, tiesiog dūriau, kur pataikiu. Nu, bet aš nežinau, ar aš suprantamai išreiškiu, bet tie video ir šortai dažnai, kur mes matom, ir kur žmonėm atrodys, kad va, aš nesu burbulė, nes aš matau tą kitą nuomonį, realiai ką tu tik matėjai, jo tu matėjai kitą nuomonį, bet tu matėjai karikatūrą, kuri realiai patvirtino tą, kad tu jau galvoji, kai visi psichai yra. Ir kad tiesiog visi išprotėja. Kai neturi jokio lokinio pagrindo, jokiai savo minčiai, nes tiesiog yra visiškai psichopatai. Bet realiai taip nėra. Labai maža dalis jų ekščiai yra psichopatai. Didžioji dalis bus tragiškas informacijos trūkumas. Ir yra logiškai, kaip jie gali pateisinti savo tas argumentacijas, tų pozicijų. Ir čia mes kalbam dabar pagrindė apie tos rusiškų žmonės. Ten labai mažai bus tų loginių argumentų, kaip čia daugiau nežinios. Bet, pavyzdžiui, kalbant apie ten ir abortų temas, ir Amerikoje svarbės temas, ir panašiai. Ten jau atsiranda actually problema, kad tu negirdi tų argumentų, kurie yra už abortus, tu girdi tik tais, ar nu, ten bet kokia tema, tu girdi tik tas karikatūros tipo. Ir čia man primena gal, kai demokratai savo rinkimuose rėmė republikonų kandidatus. Tai demokratai daro kontentą, kad, išpopuliali, kad išpopuliarintų tam tikrą republikonų kandidatą, kuris yra visiškai dirainžt. Nes žino, kad prieš jį bus lengviau laimėti. Tai tipo, čia taip panašiai veikia, tarsi, tarsi algoritmas tau duoda ne tą žmogų, ne to žmogaus views ar dar kažką, o duoda tą, su kuo tu nesutiksi, bet kuris patvirtins, ką tu galvoji. Ir man atrodo, čia yra labai dar giliau layeris problemos tais algoritmais ir burbulais ir kaip mes vertam informaciją ir ką priimam. Nes tai sudaro tarsi saugumo jausmą, kad aš nesu burbulė. Bet realiai su kiekvienu jo, jeigu tu nesupranti, tai realiai tu toliau susidarai tą pačią tau patvirtiną nuomonę. Tas veikia patvirtinimo principas. Man atrodo, čia yra dar problema, bet gerai nesikišanti tą, žiūrim toliau čia tiesiog nu, nu, nuo... Ir gal po metų pasirodys rasių straipsnį, kur pasirodo labai aišku tas terminas, kur nors nėra, bet... Walls in Russia should be, you know, blocks from the insides of the world in Russian people essentially beyond saving. And this is not something I'm coming up with. These actual comments I've seen in my channel and many other channels on the internet for the past one and a half years. There's a lot of people in the West who think like this. A lot of the times these people from free democratic countries don't actually realize what it's like to live in an authoritarian society. And after seeing all of these interviews essentially where it's just these, you know, Z people giving their Z opinions saying that you know that the West needs to be destroyed, NATO, Ukraine, whatever, they're all Nazis, they need to be destroyed. These people just watch these videos and say, yeah, this is pretty much what I'm getting. You know, Russians are all terrible people and uh, I was completely right about them being in human all along.
which first of all i believe is a funny thing to say if you want to battle fascism and second of all well have you ever thought why you know these interviews are just full of z people who are here to give their z opinions that basically coincide with what the propaganda tells them because their opinions are just propaganda that is fed to them because these people haven't been taught how to think critically maybe it's because it's actually very possible that if you give an interview and you say something that is uh, completely different from what the average z putin fan would say there is actually a very big chance that you will suffer from a similar fate such as yuri that went to prison that is about to go to prison for 10 years for giving an interview in which he gave the wrong opinion these stories are happening every single day and these are real people's lives being affected so at the end of the day right if you're a russian and you're walking through the streets and you have you know maybe anti-putin anti-z views right and you see a guy with a microphone asking you whether you think that you know vladimir putin is the greatest president of all time and he's doing everything right you know Please give us an answer. By the way, asterisk, uh, you will go to jail for 7 to 15 years if you give the wrong answer. Please, please give us your opinion though. Um. I'm pretty sure that most of the people who might even have, you know, opinions opposing of the government, they will just walk by or they will just try to, you know, say something apolitical or, you know, pretend to not know anything about the topic so that they don't have to answer the question and, you know, as a result, you know, destroying their entire life. And you know, once again, I think this topic of uh, street interviews in Russia is pretty related to the topic of polls in Russia as well. And I've already, you know, once again, made a whole video about this in, in the past. But uh, we do see all the time polls essentially that say that, you know, 80, 90 percent of Russians support the special military operation. They support the Russia's, Russia's vision and what they're doing. And I've also seen a lot of, you know, very enlightened Westerners uh, saying that, you know, this is obvious proof that Russians are all, you know, terrible people. They're all supporting this. Meanwhile, once again, nobody considers the fact that if you live in a dictatorship, in a country that jails people for their opinions you probably would not give your uh, non-z opinions on the phone to a poll right and once again i want to just show you guys this clip right here yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kaip tu gali pasitikėti, bet kokia plusa, bet kokia šalis yra tokia, tipo, nu, tu negali? рассказывают о страхе, спрашивают интерьеров прямо, арестуют ли меня. Я думаю, что ключом здесь, конечно, является желание so yeah pretty much exactly a lot of the polling in russia is either uh, done by governmental institutions or government adjacent institutions right so a lot of the times when you get in that call they also say your name and where you live and they're like hey you do you believe that you know everything that vladimir putin and his government is doing is great by the way if you don't you're going to jail for seven years i'm pretty sure that the person <laughs> on the other side of the phone is either gonna say yes of course yes i do i do just don't fucking touch me or that person will just hang up and the thing is you gotta understand that the amount of people who actually replied to polls in russia is so low that according to the data of different russian sociologists the amount of people who actually responds to these polls when being called has gone down from 23 percent to like five percent oh wow the start of the special military operation so essentially when you're seeing the data about oh, a wow, poll saying that 99.9 .9 percent of russians support everything that is going on you gotta realize that beforehand 95 percent of russians actually uh disagree to take part in the poll in the first place so in reality what you're seeing is that 99.9 percent .9 of five percent of russians support everything that's going on you know and that's actually uh quite a different number and the thing is right previously in my video about the polls i've already said that a lot of the times these polls are not even real research to be honest these polls are just done to create news headlines because it looks really True. good in the russian news when you you can say that you know 80 or <laughs> Apklausas yra zaibis, kai jis pritarė mum, jeigu net yra neslavo, ne nepatikimo. <laughs> 90% of our people are all in support of what our, you know, beloved leader is doing. And the thing with street interviews, right, is that street interviews are a great form of content, but they're not necessarily representative of anything, because to be honest, with the way street interviews are done these days, we're all on the internet, we're all on TikTok, all on YouTube, right? The algorithm is all that matters. So essentially, a lot of the times, these street interviews are becoming a tool of clickbait, where it's not about representing the public's opinion or, you know, getting all sides to speak. It's 
really about creating the most catchy title, getting the craziest person on camera to say the craziest, most Z stuff, right? That's what it's kind of all about a lot of the time, and I totally get it from a content creator perspective. And yes, that is why you get all these videos that you see on TikTok or whatever of, you know, people saying the most insane, crazy shit, because that is what gets engagements. That's what gets people riled up. That's what people want to discuss. People don't want to discuss a level-headed normal take. People want to discuss crazy people. People want to cringe, you know? True. And this is why in the street interviews, if somebody gives a crazy Z response saying that, you know, we need to destroy the West and nuke America. <laughs> the whole game you know, that was fighting against going to be us. given the most amount of coverage, the most amount of attention. And that person's opinions is pretty much what everybody's going to take away from the video. People are just going to be like, yeah, Russians are fucking idiots. And the people who actually give level-headed takes and actually oppose the propaganda and actually, you know, in the end, sacrifice their freedom for this and go to prison for 10 years for a street interview. These stories nobody wants to hear about because it doesn't break the news it does it's not interesting and uh it doesn't confirm anybody's biases that have already existed so uh who cares right nobody does and this is why exactly a lot of people don't understand what is going on whatsoever and uh i just want more people in the west to know that this is something that a lot of people are just very scared to do and it is truly a very dangerous thing to speak out in russia today so once again i just want you to take these you know polls and these street interviews with a grain of salt these are not representative I I'd rather people stay out of prison than uh, to make some people with a five second attention span who just sit on TikTok and look at crazy shit think that Russians are actually decent people. Because it's not gonna work anyway. Nobody cares. And for most people, Russians are just all terrible and actually there's nobody processing it. Really, take a pass, go and show it. Should I be so dark? It's okay, 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 it's Nes žmonės net netikėtų, kad, nu, kad jie gali taip šnekėti, tipo. Nu, gal būtų dalis, žinai, kur patikėtų, bet realiai iš karto ką, čia rusų propagandos kanalas, jo. Taip, jeigu tu kažkokią padarytum tokį vat, video, kur realiai žmonių parodotum tos iškirtum. Ne, jų, nu, jie neveiktų arba skaitų čia reportintų, nes rusų propagandą taigi. Bet čia ir yra, kai žmonės va, tiesiog tam savo burbulė, va, tokiam ir reinforsina, jis įsijungs ten, kur močiu te... E, ten klykia, kad visi ten gėjai vakarai ir panašiai, nu, va, šitą laikinam, jo čia teisybė sako, visi rusai zombi, ką jis ir turi meni. Nes jo, algoritmas taip ir dabar jau taip veiktų, kad kolektyviai visuomenė, dalis visuomenės, dabar ir užsidarė, va, tą, va, jau eko čemberį, tą temą bent jau, kad kažkur šia šaltinės aš atmesiu, nes čia propaganda rusų. Nu, problematiška yra tikrai. There's nobody fighting for freedom ever. Thousands of people arrested and sent to prisons, that's completely nothing. Because if there's no end result, who really cares, right? Who really cares about the struggle of these people and the millions of lives being destroyed? Who really cares about the trauma people experience from living under authoritarian regimes mm. and living in a constant state of fear? Who cares? Nobody does. And uh, what can I say, guys? I love this world and I want to keep living in it. Anyways, guys, yeah, Same. this is going to be pretty much it for today's video, though. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like on it. As well, guys, if you want to support me additionally, then please go over to the link down in the description. Become a YouTube member. Okay. Okay. Galvoju, ant vienas, kad turi 20 užtums, bet ne, ne užtum, kai tik pagyrė, bet realiai jo, visiškai pritariu formatai yra tam problemų tikrai. Kaip čia? Ai, sumažint, what the fuck. Problemų tikrai yra tam formatė. Jau to nepakeisim. Skink money is made.